Is the idea behind making this case for no such thing as free will, is it to lead to an egalitarian society or what is the idea? Yeah, in a sense. I mean, after after the people, well, I should point out that I'm, I have about as extreme of a stance on this as you'll get anybody in sort of the the brain sciences type stuff. There, there's other people who are at the same point, but there's a whole lot of people who would kind of say, well, you know, there's maybe some circumstances where there's exceptions. And I've staked out an extreme stance here and saying that there's none whatsoever. Um, so what do you do with that? Um, what do you do with that? And like, what's the world supposed to look like if, oh my God, people actually started believing that. And half the book, the second half of the book is that, and that was the much harder half for me to write of working through like, what's, how are we supposed to function? Well, what should society look like? And what I have to spend a lot of time there is the things that are not going to happen as disasters. Everyone will immediately say, oh, my God, you're just going to have murderers running around on the streets. Obviously not. There's a way to protect society from dangerous people without telling the dangerous people they have rotten souls. It's a quarantine model and it's straight out of public health sort of stuff. Oh my God. Okay. That, but then everybody else is going to run amok because you can't be held responsible for anything. Everyone will just become antisocial. And there's a whole literature of research on that showing that in effect for the first five minutes, you're going to run amok. And once you've had the chance to think about it and especially grow up with these ideas, you will have just as ethical of standards as somebody who believes we should be held responsible for our every action. Um, in the exact same way, that sort of parallel people who are atheists, people say, oh my God, they're going to run amok and be so immoral because they don't think there's anyone who can hold them responsible. And that's what people do for the first five seconds, or the first five years, and them deciding there is no God, but you give them enough time and they are exactly as ethical in their behavior as people who are highly, highly religious. You've just found your meaning through a different route there. Okay, so that's not going to be a problem. Then people freak out and they say, well, if, if everything's determined, nothing can ever change. Don't bother. And that's like a critical point that like, of course, we change. Massive change occurs, but we are not choosing to exercise free will when we suddenly form a new opinion. We have been changed by circumstance, and we've been changed by it as a function of who we turned out to be at the moment that we experience that circumstance. So with all of those, like, things in place of things not to panic about and change can actually happen, but it works very differently than people think it does. If you believe in free will, we're not going to run amok. We don't have murderers running around everywhere. We can get through that. I think what you're left with is exactly what you were alluding to, which is if you believe in free will, it means you're okay with some people being treated way better than the average human for reasons they had nothing to do with and other people being treated way worse. And if you really go for this, there's no free will stuff. Blame and punishment are intellectually and ethically gibberish. Praise and reward are as well. Feeling as if you have earned anything, that anyone has earned anything, that you are entitled to anything, that there is such a thing as justice being carried out, that there's such a thing as justice. None of that makes any sense at all. And you got to navigate stuff from there, which is where the, oh my God, how are we supposed to function with that? And what seems clear is, like, you know, I, I haven't believed in this free will stuff since I was a kid. And most of the time, my first reflex is to operate like an entitled, like westernized American, whatever. You know, I think this way and I can't function this way most of the time. It takes a whole lot of work to say, wait a second. 
think about like what it is that you <laughs> had no control over that got you into this like wonderfully advantageous place. Think about that person you were just having a judgment about all of that. And, you know, what we're left with is it's going to be mighty hard for everyone to decide there's no free will tomorrow. And thus society just takes off from there with no more prisons and no more meritocracy and no more CEOs with corner offices and no more, you know, it's going to be incredibly hard. Um, but what I try to hammer through in that latter part of the book is over and over historically we have identified realms where it turns out we don't have free will. People do stuff that they had no control over. And each time we figure that out and come up with what would be a biological explanation, not only doesn't society fall apart, the world becomes more humane. Thank you so much for watching. Just FYI, we post a new video almost every day. So make sure you comment and subscribe below so you don't miss out on anything. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you're really going to love this one as well. And if you ever want to see a playlist of all of my podcasts or all of the plot twists or any other category of videos, you can find links to those in the description below.